fisherman out here just hooked a giant. I'm sitting here rigging up for a morning and we're gonna go help him out. He's yelling if we had a net, he's on a kayak. Check this out. Heck yeah, man. Got a freaking big one, huh? I, he's like, he's got one. And I look over and I'm like, boy, his rod sure bent. Don't run it over, Jordo. Oh, it's a freaking joke. It looks like a steelhead. I think so. It might be or just a monster rainbow. But have come back, oh, it's huge! Oh, it could be a old it, is a it is a steelhead. It is a steelhead! He's in the neck of the steelhead! It's scary! Yeah! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 that's such oh, a yeah, nice man. fish, dude. Oh, it's ready. Bring it to the right. Try to come all the way back over your right shoulder. Come here. He's got it here. Yeah, well, buddy. Done, dude. That's a what's up, man? Yeah. I see your channel. So I, I see your channel. Yeah, you too. man. Good job. You're gonna uh, wanna bonk him, right? Yeah, oh my cool. god. <laughs> dude, that's a giant, man. Good job. Get it on a flatfish? Yeah, on, a, on, a, on your favorite one, orange. Heck no, yeah. Oh my god, I'm shaking. Oh, dude, give me another five. <laughs> Good job. Dude, you were a hole for the That's, camera. Look at that. Is it really dead? Yeah, it's dead. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, dude. man. Okay, I'll leave it now. Yeah, go eat some dinner. Yeah, thank you. It'll be Saturday, man. Thanks. Wasn't that cool, everybody? Holy heck. Didn't even get started fishing yet. <laughs> we got steelhead jumping out of the water. That's cool. Woo! Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, he got it! Hey! Oh, hey. On the mo Still there? He was munching. Something with it? Oh, <laughs> little oh. Oh. But there you have it, folks. Yeah. Look at that. It's a clear one. And so this one, you guys, we put out, we put out, we'll show you how to do this in just a second. But we put this one out in more of like a straight body. And Marlon did his with a little little bit more of a bend where he took a little bit more material here and actually made that thing have a little bend in it so it would spin down there. And that one hasn't gotten bit yet, but we just got started. So let's get that one I back out I also put there. that one out 100 feet, so I don't know. We're standing here BSing and what do you know, the wiggler worked. <laughs> So we put all the rods out, we got wigglers out the sides. We'll show you guys all our setups as we go along throughout the day here. But they just talked a bunch of stock trout in this lake. So there's rainbows, there's obviously a steelhead like you saw. Oh, uh, there's some browns. So we got a really big spread. We got some of our favorite Brad's wigglers Keep on. on we got some experimental stuff off the sides here with some dodgers and little plastic worms. We'll show you more about that in a second. This is a nice one. Oh! He'll one, smoke, he'll smoke. One thing I like to do, Addicts, is keep the rod like in the water like this and it, it helps hold the fish down and then we're just gonna do the little bill dance flip. Get him, Tiny. Little, no, 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 little, stop, 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 stop. Good boy, good boy. There we go, folks. On the Brad's Little Wiggler, we got ourselves a stocked rainbow trout. One thing that's really cool, huge shout out to WDFW. They are stocking all of our lakes recently with a ton of fish for all you addicts to get out here and catch. So if you're in Washington State, make sure you get on Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife's website, check out all the lakes that they just stocked the fish in. And coming up here really soon, they have a derby where they're gonna be tagging all the fish. And you, if you catch a tag fish, you have an opportunity to win a bunch of prizes. So again, huge shout out to WDFW. We appreciate them for giving us fish to catch and get out here and everyone to have fun. So get out here and do it. It's sunny, weather's nice. We got trout on, baby. They're jumping everywhere. Another thing out there, addicts, it's really important. A lot of trout fishermen, I, I know in the salmon and steelhead world, it's, it's something that we always do when we get our fish. But I don't see it a lot when guys are out here trout fishing and it can help the taste of your fish, especially these stock trout, and it's bleed them. Just bleed the fish, take your knife, get in here in the gills like this and just cut down so you got some blood coming out and then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just cut those gills and just get some of that blood out. It'll help the taste. And throw it in Jordan's We're gonna throw them in boat. our live well down here. Check it out. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's getting hit again. They're oh. hitting. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, there he is. I think it came off. It's not there anymore? Nope. 
So this new method we're trying, guys, it's a really cool little setup with a diver and just a rubber worm. Marlon's really opened my eyes to these rubber worms, just any kind of mad river worm, or, or we might have a little secret worm coming out soon. But the, these trout love these little plastic worms, and it's nice because it don't have to fish bait. You don't have to have you know keep bait alive all day long, so on and so forth. And uh, we just kind of winged it and just to see if it would work, and we got it right behind a mud dogger Brad's do or a mud dogger Brad's diver. I can't speak today. And got the worm just dangling behind it, and it seems to be working. Oh, that was good, man. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> They're just trout. No, he's not. He's off. Man, how do they throw in those hooks so easy? Well, so far, the little wiggler rules. <laughs> oh, shit. hammered as he was speaking, as he was talking about it. I think this side just got bit, too. To the day. Oh, that's a big one. Got him on the lips. I think he came off. Why are they coming off? He so jumped easy? one time and came off, folks. Darn it. Oh, there he is on the hunt. Oh, he's hammered it. Oh, oh he's down. God. Oh, my God. Guys, why are we losing so many? Dude, it's a stock hook. We just. Okay, well, we might have to make a change here. I got a lot of hooks. I got my whole steelhead pack. So we keep losing them, guys. That's probably the sixth or seventh fish we've hooked in the last 20 minutes. And they, every one of them's coming off. So. I don't know if it's our hooks. I don't know if it's the way these fish are eating. Obviously, they're hungry, but we're, let's change some stuff up. I'm going to throw this cast master out there. And you guys can see, some of the, sometimes the most effective way to catch trout is to keep trying new things. They're obviously here. They, you can check the stocking reports. You know that. This is what they're hitting. Yeah. You know Just the a little, it die, this thing dies like two to four feet. Really, really shallow, kind of stays up top, but you can see it's got just a crazy, just super nice, just. Or they're just little fish. One of the two. Ah. Uh, or they're just really little, so they're not getting hooked. So far, port to port! Port to port! Really Hogged the whole way. Yeah, we really got a, yeah, got a whole way here. Got slept <laughs> here, red carpet. Yep, wherever you want to go, dude, it's yours, bro. <laughs> dude, we can't keep them on. I've gotten like five now already. Another one. Oh, smashing the boys on the old wedding ring. I just had one on the wiggler, too. Don't mess it around and let him pop off, then this one folded. Yeah. We've lost them, we just hooked another two or three and lost them all. Maybe it's the rusty hooks. Okay, next thing on the list to try with another little Bratz Dodger, down to a orange KCP. Orange has been working really good today. We got fish on the orange wiggler. Uh, the dude obviously caught a giant steelhead on the on the orange uh, plug. So we're going back to the good old fashioned KCP. I'm not putting anything in there yet. We can add some scent, add some bait, but I'm gonna go just good old fashioned to start with. I'm guessing with the heat of the day, they'll start kind of going further and further down on the water column. I can see them on my depth finders. We're cruising around here. And right now we got fish at eight feet and at 20. So the one at 20 looks big. That might be a steelhead. <laughs> oh, we're getting hammered multiple, multiple hammers. Oh, it's on there. It's on there, dude. KCP in the worm. Oh no, that's the KCP in no, the dodger. Dude, something's going on. No, here. you're just over the line. Go over under. Other way. There you go. There you go. You got it this way. Yeah, we got it. We got it, everybody. We got it. This looks like a bigger one, too. This is a pretty nice one. Oh my god, <laughs> it just sat the hook. What is wrong with us today? That was hilarious. It was so delicate, too. He just went pooey. Pooey. Pooey on you. I was just reeling them in all slow. <laughs> We're very shallow today, guys. I keep running my stuff out too far, just out of habit, and I don't think we're in them. Maybe we need to tie the hooks closer together. Oh, that one's on. <laughs> we got the buddy bite. It was a buddy bite. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's gonna Ooh. tangle us, man. He's gonna tangle us. He's fighting. out of mind of its own. He's fighting good. Oh, it's a mind. He's got a mind of its own. It's gonna, we're gonna delicately reel this one in, folks. Oh, keep down. Keep down. Stay down. <laughs> Keep the rod in the water, folks. Oh, it's a shiny one. Very shiny thing. He's giving a lot of a. He's giving a big fight for a little fish. Dude, he ain't that little. Put. <laughs> All right, here we go. Little nice. On the, we were just talking. We were just talking about this color. It was one that we've been told over and over by our friends at Brad's how awesome it works. And I was just like, I've never caught one. And we turn around, look at Charles, and there it is. Fish on, Brad's wiggler. Oh, it almost got Perfect me. Perfect release. There it is. 
I'm not sure if they even sell this color, do they? I don't know. I don't know, but there it is. Sorry, Brad. Brad Showborn. <laughs> Brad Showborn's favorites. Oh, 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 the they never come off Cashmasters. Where look? Why'd you say that? I don't know. I'm telling you guys, keep the rod in the water on this fish, and it does help. Oh, good one, dude. Nice work. Old oh, little with the snatch. So Get cool. out of here, you. Dude, should we let that one go? Oh, okay. he's tore up pretty bad. All right. You guys see here, this is something good to show the addicts out there. Normally, like if you're out catching and releasing, and, but you have the option to catch fish, if you're hooking something that looks like this, where that hooks in the mouth like that, you never want to let that fish go. Even if it's too small, even if you don't want to catch it and keep it towards your limit, make sure to keep fish when they're like mortally hooked like that. When you know they're bleeding, they're not going to make it out of that, and uh, you're not going to throw them back and they're going to swim away safely. So this one, this one's going in the smoker. Look at him go. <laughs> That's so cool. Check this out, addicts. They're starting young and out here in Washington State. <laughs> oh. Where, where, where? Got it. Back on the KCG. Oh, this one's really kicking my butt. He's running right at me. Oh, we got a double. Oh, he's still on there. This is just a little wee little guy. Wee little guy. Well, you can see the difference in between how this one was hooked by the single hooks and that other one by the treble, so we're gonna let him go. Mine came off. Mine came off, I lost him. So the other cool part about these KCPs that you guys have seen us do before, you take that little rubber ring off. And I'm gonna do a little trick that I like. I like these garlic power eggs. And I'm just gonna take one of these and they're just soft enough that they'll, they won't, they'll like collapse inside the body of this thing. So I'm gonna open that body up. Man, these things stink. Dude, they smell horrible. They stink. I'm gonna stick that in there just like that. Close it up. And we got a scented little lure there. Perfect. Oh, fish on. Big time. Oh, he's right to the top. Fish That's how you get him. You fish the other side of the oh, lake. Oh, he just popped off. Oh, the old showborn special, man. Cute little guy. Looking for a little something bigger. These are just little fish sticks. Cute little dude. In the back. Again, the shallow water stuff is getting them, but man, I know there's bigger fish in here and I'm guessing they're on the bottom. Fished this lake last year uh, with Cameron and his little daughter and she got into some awesome ones. She's gonna show you a little clip of it right now. Get it, get it. There you go, there you go. Get it right here, stick it in your gut. That's a big <laughs> trout, that's a big <laughs> trout. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> smile, smile at the camera real quick. There you go, we're gonna let him go. And most of the fish that we got on that trip, a lot of them were down at like 20, 22 feet right on the bottom of the lake. So I think there's gotta be something to that with those bigger ones. They're down there in that little bit deeper water. But those fish were really a lot further down in the deeper columns of the water. All these little ones are up at the surface eating smaller bugs. So we'll see. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, nice, got it. I think the bottom of it. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, those yeah. just took it off too. Reeling them in slow here, folks. Oh, double, oh, double, oh, double oh, on the worm! Double, oh, he's right to the surface, right to the surface. Ooh, this is a nice one. Oh, what a jumper! Crossed up, like crossed up. Oh! The worm's really dropping them, man. I have to mess with our hook setup a little bit here. Good one, choker. Got him on the choker. Oh, we got another one on. It's out there jumping. Oh, on the God. KCP. On the KCP. Mayhem out here in these streets, everybody. It's mayhem. We found a school. We, we found, found a school. him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's all bendo. He's all bendo. Look at that one all bent up. Keeping him low like Marlon. Oh, yo. Yo, my God. Oh. <laughs> he says, why, Dad? You were just yelling. That might be one of the nicer ones we've gotten so far. Oh, thanks, little. We're keeping that one. Here it is, everybody. Look at that thing. Look how pretty that thing is. That one was on the power bait KCP that time. 
Uh, we got a little bit bigger fish, add a little bit more scent. Sometimes you'll see that. The, the bigger ones can be a little bit harder to catch because they've been in here longer or they're just older. But uh, all these little ones have been eating most of the stuff up towards the surface, but as we've gone a little deeper and added some scent and done a couple different things, we started getting a little bit bigger ones. Worm well, we can't keep them on though. Yeah, I think the, um, these are really, these are our good mustad hooks too. So it's, it's something about the way they're biting. I rigged, actually rigged these up for steelhead and I think the hook gap might be a little bit too much for their little mouths. So what we're gonna do to counteract us losing these, these are some really, really cool product by Mustad. They're slow death hooks. They're used for walleye mostly and in the trout world, but I've never seen a ton of people using them for trout. So we're gonna experiment here. It's got a really hard bend in that hook. So it actually makes that worm spin. I'm gonna thread it right up onto that hook there. Show you. Just gonna do a normal knot here. Okay, so I'm just gonna thread this about halfway up. Normally you'd be putting like an actual night crawler on here, but it works really good with these plastics. I'm gonna thread it all the way up to the base of the hook. Went a little far there, so I'm gonna pull some of that out. I wanna have a nice straight tail. Now look at that, everybody. It's got that nice little roll to it. That tail's a little more exposed, so we still might miss them, but we'll just let them eat it a little bit more and hopefully they'll stay on. I'll show you how this works here. Check this out. Look at that motion. Look at all that little wiggly action, all that goodness. All that sex appeal. Woo! It's gonna get one. 20 foot. It's been the magic number, so it's about 10 foot. Gosh, master! Just a lot of them, boy. Wrecking them. <laughs> we are getting them. It's cool because they're biting all sorts of setups Everything. today. That's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with fishing sometimes, especially if I'm guiding or something, is when only one thing and one color works all day. It's, it's just so frustrating because normally it means only one person's catching the fish or they're having to share their rod constantly. But uh, it's really cool when you can get out here and get them in all these different methods. A lot of it, for you guys out there just learning how to trout fish, is going to th that target rich environment. We came to a lake today that just got stocked. So all these fish are in here, they're easy to catch right now. In another month and a half, a lot of these biters, a lot of these easy ones will get caught up by guys like us doing this. And uh, so making sure to get out there right when they're getting stocked and, and having fun on a beautiful day is really important if you want to catch fish. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Quick release. One thing I'm noticing that their mouths are really soft. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh Music bite. We got a music bite going here, everybody. We got an audience behind us. Everyone's out on the lake here today. Oh yeah. Oh, we spat it right at the boat. Man, that blue and silver cast master, old faithful man. We all know I like blue and silver metal things, but this little guy. I mean, if you're gonna want, if you're trying to catch a trout or you've never caught one before, I believe Marlin did a video of best fishing lure for trout ever, and it was this right here. Go get you some. Oh, I have one here. Uh. <laughs> it started reeling and he slammed it. Slam me. He gave me the old slammy, everybody. Right back to the basics here. That's a nicer one too. Brad's orange, we knew it the whole time. We were just wasting our time out here fishing anything else. Orange is the color of the day. This water has a really nice green color to it, so it's not a surprise that this orange is working. It radiates really well in the sunlight, as you can tell. And uh, it's putting most of the fish in the boat here. Hello, you want pizza? Look who we ran out. Of. All Look right, we ran thank into you. Our addicts. Laria, you want some pizza? You want some pizza? <laughs> you know she does. Here. Here you go, dude, some breadsticks. One thing about them addicts, boys. They ain't afraid to hand out the pizza on the water. And <laughs> the pizza or the pepperoni. Or the pepperoni. <laughs> mm. All right, so the trout bites really died off. It's a really nice day out here. So the, as you can tell, the lake filled up a little bit where we were trout fishing. So we're gonna totally switch gears. We're gonna try to go find ourselves a big old spawn and large mouth bass. So we got our rods. We're gonna switch up some stuff, show you a couple techniques. Let's go find something. Look at them all. Those half is carp, right? Where? Oh, or over there. Just... Those are not carp, dude. Those were big ass trout or something, Jordan. Whatever, they look like torpedoes. You know what I mean? 
They're still there. I can see them. Get closer so we can see what they are. Yeah. I'm just tripping. Maybe they're big ass grass part. Okay, everybody. So we just pulled. We're working this brush line, and Marlon looks over, and there's like what 50 of them. Yeah. It's huge, like every one of them is probably over 10 pounds. I don't know what they are. We're gonna check it out. What are those, dude? I wanna get close so we can see them. Please tell me you can see those in the camera. There is like a massive pile of them. Well, bass fishing was a bust, but we made our way back to the boat ramp. Now we're gonna go do a cool little smoke recipe, so stay tuned for that, but I'm gonna show you a cool little trick on how to clean these things. Especially these little ones, the way we're gonna smoke them like this, I'm gonna smoke the whole body whole. So, it shows you again how awesome these scissors are, these Gerber scissors. I'm gonna trim all the way up the gills. I'm gonna put it right through the back of his gills there. Cut down, bam. And then with that, with that one little motion, I got the, I got the guts, the head comes off, everything comes right out. And clean that bloodline out just like that and quickest most effective easy way to clean out a trout that there is really just like that ready to go do a little extra cleaning at home okay everybody we made it back into Kenny's kitchen I'm getting these fish all cleaned up. I'm gonna get them all, get all that blood and all the rest of those guts that I missed out, out there on the river, out of their body cavity, because that's never good to eat. And I like to smoke these things whole, and I'm gonna show you this process. And it's, it's really easy, it's really fun, and it makes it actually easier to eat them if you're gonna smoke them like this, because you can just rip that skin back, peel all the meat off the bone, and just toss that bone right when you're done with it. Uh, so it works out really nicely for these smaller fish like this, rather than trying to fillet them and uh, get as much meat off the bone as you can. Just leave it on the bone and actually cook it with it. So I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned off and then we're gonna show you the seasoning. So for these whole fish like this, all I'm using, normally if I'm doing salmon or something, I'm gonna use a big bowl and cut it up into pieces. But a normal cake pan works really good for this because they all sit in there perfect. As long as they're not over you know, 17, 18 inches, they'll all fit within this. So. Let's take this over. We're gonna do a very, very basic wet brine. Um, mine, the, the brine that I like to use, you guys have seen it a lot on here. And if you guys haven't seen the other episodes where I smoke fish or Marlin smokes fish, be sure to go back into the log of, of videos that we have and check those out. We've got a lot of really cool recipes on Addicted. Uh, but I'm doing a very basic kind of wet and dry brine. I'm gonna start with just a little bit of kosher salt. And I go a little heavy on this because this is gonna cure that fish. I'm gonna roll those over. Get a nice covering of salt on both sides. Everything else can just go on top of one side, but you wanna get that salt all over. I want it to soak on in there. And then I'm gonna go just a little soy sauce across each one of them. And that'll actually soak right through the skin. It's so salty, it'll soak right into that meat and, and actually spread that flavor out really nicely. And then a little bit of teriyaki sauce. Just kind of drizzle a little bit on each one. And this stuff will soak up from the bottom side too. And then, oh, actually I better season it first. I'm gonna go with the garlic powder. Just a nice light garlic flavor on there because I'm a garlic fanatic. And then we're just gonna go with the brown sugar. Just douse all the way across that. Just get a nice light covering over all the pieces of fish. I'm gonna break some of those chunks up and just cover it up a little bit because this is actually gonna bond with that, that salt and create kind of a liquidy, syrupy uh, pool that that stuff will be sitting in and that's what's gonna let that stuff brine. If you want, you can kind of push some of that salt and, and sugar inside those cavities of those fish. And then you're gonna put some saran wrap over this and put this in the fridge for about a day and a half, two days. I like to let it brine longer the better. Um, once that salt starts to cure that fish, it's not gonna go bad in the fridge because it's actually doing that preserving process of the salt. So got that thing ready, I'm gonna stick it in the fridge. Be right back with you in a second and we'll smoke this fish. All right, everybody, it's smoking time. This stuff's been in the fridge for two or three days. It's got a really nice brine to it. I'm gonna open this stuff up and I'm gonna show you. You can see how these, these trout almost have cured. And that's the point of using that kosher salt and using that, that brown sugar is that it soaks into that meat and it'll create a curing process and that salt will start to almost dry out that meat, which you want for that smoking process. So you can see each one of these 
has a nice red color inside. It's all started as like white trout meat. Now it's not got that nice red color to it. And the main trick that I'm gonna show you guys here, kind of the best part of this video for smoking the trout, is this little trick we're gonna do right here. We're gonna take ourselves a toothpick and we're gonna open this body cavity of this fish and this will work really nicely to get a good smoke all the way through the meat. But I'm gonna poke out through one side and I'm gonna poke it right through the belly piece of that other side and I'm gonna create that little opening in that cavity and you know, that meat will hold on to that toothpick really well just like that so now that creates its own little platform so i'm going to take this i'm going to turn it up and i'm going to set that right on that grate just like so So we got each one of these things pegged up like that. The nice part is that smoke's gonna go right up in that body cavity. And this method works really good for if you're smoking perch or a whitefish, anything that's small, that has that small chest cavity like that, you're gonna smoke that whole fish. So kokanee, trout, perch, whitefish, I mean, whatever, wherever you live out in the world or in the country, this is a really fun, cool little method that'll allow you to get that smoke in and up into that meat. So I'm gonna load this on that second rack here. This is the only thing we're putting in the smoker today. First things first, today I'm using like these little Traeger pellets. And these things work pretty good in a pinch. A lot of, up here in the Northwest, it's salmon season, so it's really hard to find smoker pellets. Sometimes I'll go cut my own wood. But today, I have these little pellets here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water so they don't catch on fire. I'm gonna set this in here. Close this thing up. And I'm gonna let this trout smoke for about three to five hours. This trout's obviously, there's not a ton of meat on that bone, so you don't wanna overdo it and dry it out. So we're gonna go about two to three hours in about 45 minutes to an hour, I'm gonna come out here, check my smoker pellets, might add a few more, add a little bit more water, and wait for this delicious fish to be done. All right, everybody, let's give it a look. It's been about three hours so far. And really, if you're fishing, if you're making fish this small, it's not gonna take as long as if you were making big chunks of salmon and stuff too, so but my goodness. It's perfect. You don't want to overdo it either. It's going to be really easy to dry this stuff out, but you can see how easily that skin and all those bones and everything peels right out of that fish. Comes back and look at how awesome that little trout is. Just perfect. Nice and juicy, ready to go down into Jordan's tummy. Oh man. Mm, absolutely amazing. Check it out guys, it turned out perfect. What a great day on the water. Saw some really cool things, made some new friends, helped somebody catch probably their first steelhead ever. Comment below with what you guys thought of that guy catching that fish today. I wouldn't rather start my day any other way than helping out a fellow addict out there. So whoever you are out there, be sure to comment below and say what's up. It was awesome helping you do that today. Thank you so much, you guys. If you guys wanna see more of these awesome trout videos just like you saw today and these really fun catching cooks, go up here and click this link to the next video. Go down and hit subscribe, turn your bell on, hit that little thumbs up, and be sure to comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. You guys stay fishy, we'll see you out there.